we didn't have any COVID outbreaks. Um, so I was just really proud of the guys um, and, you know, managing all the difficulties of this season and being able to stay focused um, on, on the games with all the other things that we had going on with all the different protocols. I know for Trey, obviously it ended on a little bit of a rough note because he got injured there at the end. Um, but what did you like about the way he kind of uh, handled himself in the playoffs and and kind of um, led the team? Yeah, no, I mean, obviously very pleased. And, and you know, I told him yesterday, um, you know, the fact not just Trey, but really a lot of our guys, you know, gave up some individual stats for team success. You know, his shot attempts Per, per game were down this year. His numbers mm -hmm. were down across the board, I think. But, you know, he did that um, sacrifice for the good of the team. Um, and then obviously really pleased with the way he played in the playoffs. You know, that was always, you know, one of the knocks on him. There, there are lots of knocks on him uh, throughout his career. But one of them was, you know, could he be on a winning team? Could he produce in the playoffs? And, you know, I think he, he proved that he's capable of doing both. So, uh, you know, very pleased with him. Um, you know, still has work to do. Uh, and he will continue to work and get better. And I think that's what's exciting about not just Trey, but but all our guys. You know, we're, we're still, you know, say for a few veteran guys, we're still a really young team. You know, the, the core of our team is a young group. And, you know, that's what gives us optimism moving forward. Chris Karshner. Hey, Travis, um, when you have a season like this one, does it at all change your thinking when it comes to the roster decisions you have to make now as opposed to what you might have thought a couple of months ago? Uh, you know, maybe a little bit. Uh, I was joking. We had a, a another draft workout this morning and I was talking to one of the guys and, uh, you know, they're talking about a particular player and I was like, well, he can't help us beat Milwaukee. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it, it does change a, a little bit. Um, so, um, you know, you know, we, we don't, we don't want to, uh, how do I say this? So I don't paint myself in the corner. You know, we certainly we're excited about the direction we're on and we don't want to take steps back. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I anticipate us, you know, making deep playoff runs every year because there's a lot of different things that go into that. But, you know, we, we want to continue to be very competitive moving forward um, in the league. How challenging is it to keep a very young roster in place while those contract decisions loom while also simultaneously trying to improve the roster outside of internal growth. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's that's the name of the game, right? I mean, every that's why we have a salary cap. Every team has has to make those decisions. Um, and, and it does get hard. You know, obviously, it's a lot easier when you have guys on rookie scale deals to build out your roster. But once those deals come up and, you know, those players start making bigger money, you know, you really are limited on the ways to add to your team. Uh, mid-level exceptions and things of that nature. But, you know, we, we won't be in a situation where we have a lot of cap space like we had last year. Zach Klein. Trav, the way Milwaukee won by having so much success in the paint, does that change the, your philosophy and how you build this team? Uh, do you need to get uh, bigger guys or just play bigger? Well, no, I, I think, listen, uh, obviously we want to – you know, improve and, you know, Milwaukee's a big physical team. And we saw that, especially in game five, where they really, you know, went to work uh, on in the paint on us. Um, I have a, a lot of confidence in our guys, um, you know, and their ability to be physical. But, you know, speaking with all the guys yesterday, I think it's easy to say that playoff basketball is more physical, but until you live it, um, you know, now they all understand what that means. Um, it is, it is just a different game. It's just officiated completely different than they officiate in the regular season. And, you know, everyone always says that, but I think until you actually experience it, it, it can be kind of a shock. And where do you stand with coach? How the conversations with Nate been uh, moving forward? Uh, we um, have an agreement in place uh, in principle with Nate. Um, so we're just drawing up the contract and um, you'll probably be getting an email from Garen or Steiny soon, uh, announcing him as our next head coach. Charles Odom. Sorry, um, just to follow up on that, um, his initial reluctance to accept an interim position, did that cause you any concern about his interest in 
uh, assuming a, a permanent long-term role? Uh, no, it, it didn't. Um, like I said, we, we've now worked together for, I don't know, four months. Um, we've had a, a very good working relationship, and I'm excited that he's going to be our head coach moving forward. Did you follow up? Did you feel a need to um, to move quickly on this uh, before uh, another team had a chance to come in and speak with him? Well, from the first day when he took over as interim head coach, you know, we both kind of made the decision that we were going to get to the end of the season before we talked. Um, the season obviously ended the other day, and we started talking with his agent yesterday and uh, came to a deal this morning. Brandon Harper. Yeah, Travis, we've known that, you know, throughout the league, not just with you all, but overall, it's pretty much been the war of attrition with so many teams around the league. You know, you've had guys to miss 20, 30, 40 games. And, you know, throughout history, if you look around the league, you just don't have teams succeed the way that you all have done this season when you have so many key guys miss that many games. Just talk about how proud you are of your guys being able to overcome so many obstacles to get to where you all got to in such a early time frame. Yeah, listen, I, I give our, our staff a ton of credit, um, you know, our training staff for, you know, getting guys back as soon as possible. Um, but to your point, you know, injuries happen. And, you know, one of the big things we wanted to focus on this year uh, with our roster is trying to have great balance all the way through it. And, as you as you said, you know, you saw a bunch of different guys throughout the season, you know, all the way down to, you know, Skylar Mays and Nason Knight as our two two way guys be called upon at different parts of the season and go out there and be productive for us. You know, Brandon Goodwin will trace Ranger's ankle, feels into the starter role, does a great job. Um, so I, I we, we did to your point, you know, we, we got a lot of production from all 17 guys on our roster this year, and it was very needed. Um, uh, because of all the injuries. Mark Bradley. Travis, uh, were there moments during the playoffs when, when you would look out on the court and say, yeah, this is what I had in mind when I came here four years ago? Uh, I don't know that I ever had those thoughts um, in my mind, but I, I will say there are moments during the playoffs when you, you, know, you take a lot of a lot of pride and a lot of joy and, you know, what we've been able to accomplish in, in such a short period. Um, you know, typically when you go through these um, rebuilding processes through the draft, it can take, you know, several years to, to, to do that. And, um, you know, to essentially go through three drafts and be able to, to get to where we are. Um, I, I do take satisfaction in that. The, um, was what you saw in the postseason, um, you felt that a change in coaching was was needed back on March 1st? Uh, you kind of you had a team there. capable of doing that. You, you, you kind of cut out there, so I didn't really hear the question. I'm sorry. The, uh, the reason you made the coaching change on March 1st, is, is was that because you thought we, we not only should be in the playoffs, we have a chance to do something in the playoffs? Well, I mean, we, we had the stated goal going into this year, right? We wanted games at the end of the season to matter. Um, you know, we were trying to get at least into the play in uh, for the playoffs. Um, you know, when we decided to make the change, we just felt like to give ourselves the best chance to get in that situation, you know, that, that, that was needed at the time, yes. Thank you. Terrell Thomas. Good afternoon, Travis. Uh, how far are you in your process as far as preparing for the next season uh, as it compares to previous years? Of course, this year, uh, this, the, the playoffs went a lot further than normal and our Hawks went a lot further than a lot of people expected in playing in July, but the season starts right back up in October. So uh, how far are you in your process as far as looking at draft picks, potential free agents, and how the roster is currently constructed? Yeah, no, um, I mean, listen, that's really kind of a year round job. Um, you know, obviously, you, you know, we're scouting for the draft all year long, um, you know, as far as, you know, pro personnel scouting for free agents. Uh, it's a re year round job. So um, obviously, we're what 24 days away from the 
from the draft. Um, you know, we're in the process of bringing guys in. We've already had several draft workouts. Uh, we've got two more later on this week. So, you know, we're, we're in full swing uh, on that front. Thank you. Emmanuel Glaze. Travis, you just stated a, a few minutes ago about um, being able to have some satisfaction about building through the draft. This team is loaded with a lot of the draft picks that you guys picked over the last few years. How important is it to continue that build and find those type of pieces that can help through the draft? Uh, extremely important, as you know, we talked about earlier because of the salary cap. You know, if you can draft a player that can give you uh, production on a rookie still contract, that's going to be extremely uh, important to us um, as we you know, sit here and project to be a team over the cap in the next few years. Um, you, you have to be able to go out and find those guys on, well, for lack of a better term, team-friendly contracts that can help you uh, win games on the floor. Let's go to Chris Kirshner. Hey, Travis, when did you know uh, specifically that uh, Nate was the guy for you? Was there a specific moment during this postseason run? Uh, no, I, I think even before the postseason started, uh, I think he, you know, he did a great job from day one when he came in. Um, uh, the players responded to him extremely well, and, and I thought he did a great job of being uh, really consistent with his messaging to the group. Um, so, you know, I I don't remember the exact day or time, but at some point, you know, during the regular season, you know, went into Nate and told him that, you know, the job was his if he wanted it, and you know, we both agreed to wait till the end of the season to uh, formalize it. But um, it was before the playoffs. Why do you believe his uh, messaging resonated so well with the team? I, I just, he's unbelievably consistent with it. You know, there's, there's no back and forth. You know, once he says, you know, this is what we're going to do, he's consistent with it. And because of that consistency, I think the players believe it. You know, when somebody tells you, you know, something one day and then they tell you the opposite next day, it's hard to have that trust. But uh, with him, he was un unbelievably persistent with his with his views and, you know, guys bought into it. Sarah. Hey, Travis. Um, how did you see Onyeka develop over this season from obviously starting the season out kind of banged up and a little bit of a slow start to flashing such major potential in the playoffs? Yeah, no, I, I told oh yesterday, um, you know, I don't think I've ever seen a player uh, improve so much from the beginning of the playoffs to the end of the playoffs. You know, as you mentioned, you know, when we drafted him last year, he had the, the broken bone in his foot. Um, you know, didn't have a summer league opportunity, you know, wasn't able to participate in training camp, you know, didn't be, wasn't able to play through the start of the season and, you know, to get, you know, maybe three minutes a game in the beginning to, mm -hmm. you know, where he's out there playing against, you know, two time MVP and, and holding his own is, is, is very, very, very proud of him. Um, you know, told him he should be extremely proud, but you know, th th there's a lot more there. Um, and O knows that, and, and we feel like that. Um, you know, he he's he's only going to get better. Zach Klein, Trav, who pulled off the, the biggest pleasant surprise in your eyes? Preseason, you have an expectation of some skill set for one of your guys, and over the course of the year, they do something. You're like, man, I, I thought. You know, eight, nine months ago, they were this, but they exceeded my expectations going into the year. Uh, John Steinberg. Well, he, he is a Hall of Famer. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, listen, I, I think that there were there were a lot of guys that, um, you know, improved this year. Uh, I really do. I mean, obviously, we just talked about, oh, and the growth, uh, you know, for a rookie coming in. Um, you know, I thought Kevin Herter from the start of the year to the end of the year, you know, what he was able to do on the defensive side of the floor, um, you know, for large stretches of the season, um, being asked to guard the other team's best player. Um, I don't think anyone ever, you know, thought of Kevin in that light. So you know, a ton of growth there, but I think really, um, and not necessarily a young guy, but a new guy to us, um, Bogdan, uh, Bogey, I, I thought, you know, obviously I've been a fan of his. I remember watching him all the way back, you know, when he played at Fenerbahce all the time. But, you know, 
he, he's even a better player than I thought. He, he's, he's just a really good basketball player. So I, I guess I would go with him. Um, but like I said, we had a bunch of guys, you know, step up and have good years for us. And how's uh, DeAndre on the update on his progress? Yeah, he's out, still out in L.A. doing his rehab. Um, by all accounts, rehab is going extremely well. Um, but, um, you know, he'll, he'll be out there uh, the rest of his time doing his rehab. But um, every every report I get is nothing but positive. Brad Rowland. Hey, Travis, it's obviously a good problem, but you didn't ever have your roster at full health and you were able to still make this run. Does that make it in any way more challenging to do your evaluations, not knowing and not seeing this group completely as you uh, designed it? I don't know that it's challenging. I think it, it was probably more a little bit exciting, um, you know, what, what we could be with a full group. Um, so, like I said, throughout the course of the season, you know, different guys stepped up uh, and we're all able to go out there and be be productive for us at different times. So um, I, I don't I don't think it makes the job harder. Uh, I think it you know maybe is a little bit more exciting to us to to what we could be if everybody is healthy. But you know, very few teams, if any, go through the whole year where they stay healthy. So it's, it's good to have that that depth for sure. Eric Jackson. Hey, Travis, um, what areas of the roster would you like to see improved over the offseason? Uh, you know, I, I think, as I mentioned, we're, we're in a good space. Uh, a lot of our guys are, are under contract moving forward. Um, you know, one of the areas, you know, it's no secret that we've always been, you know, I guess we've struggled to feel a consistent role is at, at the backup point guard spot. Um, you know, if you try to over the past couple of years, we've had, you know, a couple different, a couple, couple different guys. So I think that'll be one area that we look to, to shore up this, this off season. Yeah. And with Nate locked in, how much are you going to listen to his opinion just in terms of the construction of the roster? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> listen, um, obviously he's going to have a voice in all our personnel decisions moving forward. It uh, would be pretty pretty um, foolish of me to go sign some player that he hates and that he would never play. Thanks. Edwin Powell. Good morning, Travis. Has any um, discussion been on um, the players that we've been playing summer league or is that more of a Nate McMillan call? No, we've uh, we've uh, talked to the guys that are going to be playing summer league uh, that are on the roster. Um, I think it's been out there publicly um, that Cam was going to play in summer league. He'll he'll be on the team. Um, Onekia will be on the team. Uh, Skyler Mays will be on the team, and then um, we anticipate Nason Knight uh, as well uh, for the guys that were played with us this year. Davide. Hi, I'm from Italy, so I'm going to ask you about Danilo Gallinari here. Um, obviously, he was one of your biggest signings uh, in the past uh, offseason. I'm curious if you, what do you think about his performance and how are you going to support him this summer when he's going to play in the Olympics with Italy? Uh, yeah, so you guys had a huge win yesterday. Congratulations. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, when I spoke with Gallo yesterday, um, you know, that game hadn't happened yet, but he was not planning on playing on the national team, but that may have changed now. I don't know. Um, but um, if he decides to play, certainly he'll have our full support. Um, as far as, you know, how he performed this year, I, obviously he was a big piece of what we did. He was, um, uh, you know, both on and off the court, as I told him yesterday, you know, he was had a great veteran presence in our locker room. Um, just the, with his professionalism, the way that he goes about taking care of his body every single day, set a great example for our guys. Um, and then obviously, a, you know, a productive player on the court. Um, you know, we really featured him in our second unit to be able to provide consistent scoring punch for us off the bench. Um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a great person uh, and obviously a good player. So we were ex super excited about adding him this past summer. Christos. Hello, Mr. Slang. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I would like to ask you one of the most uh, one of the key factors of a team success in the NBA is consistency. So, what do you need to do next season to be a consistent team to fight for the championship one more year? 
Uh, well, I think, you know, obviously we have to become, a, you know, a more consistent um, defensive team, you know, that, that as, they, as the old saying goes, you know, defense wins championships, right? I think we showed a lot of growth there. Um, you know, I think the other thing that we can continue to do better as a group, and I think we got better as the year went on this year, is, you know, limit our turnovers. Those are the two things that, you know, good teams do. Um, you know, they don't beat themselves by making turnovers, and, you know, they can go out there and get stops when they need to. And for next season, what's your initial expectation for that group? Um, you know, we want to be, we want to be competitive. Um, you know, that's the other thing that, you know, I told our guys uh, is when teams play the Atlanta Hawks next year, you know, they're going to, they're going to show up. You know, we were in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, there are, teams aren't going to overlook us uh, next year. So, you know, they got to be ready for that. So we want, we want to go out there and, you know, be extremely competitive and be successful on the court. Mark Bradley. Um, coach, just for the, or I'm sorry, not coach, general manager, just like, uh, just Travis. for the, well, yeah, <laughs> Travis, the, um, just for the record, you're, you're the, the Hawks feeling toward John Collins going into this off season is what? Uh, I told John yesterday, I was extremely proud of the way he played this year. Um, you know, he, he made a decision to, uh, go to restricted free agency last fall. And a lot of times that can impact a player. Um, but I, I think what you saw from John, you know, he, he, he wasn't out there playing for his numbers. He was out there playing for the team to win. And a lot of cases when guys are going into free agency, um, you know, you can see the opposite. And, and we didn't see, see that at all in John this year. And I think that speaks very, very high, highly of his character and, and what he's about. You know, he's, he's about being on a winning basketball team. So I, I have, don't have anything negative to say about John Collins. But there is definite, definite interest in keeping him as a Hawk next year. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why there wouldn't be. Thank you. Chris Karshner. Uh, yesterday, Bogey said that he had a meeting today with the uh, training staff regarding his knee. Is there any update with that? Yeah, so um, as you guys know, he, he was playing on an injured knee uh, through this last series. Um, you know, our, our doctors have looked at it. Uh, right now, we're waiting on a second opinion doctor to get back to us to see what the best thing to do is. But, you know, I would say in the next, you know, day, certainly two days, we'll have a plan for him on what's going to happen with his knee. And then since you've uh, taken over, uh, you've consistently said when it comes to the draft that your plan is to always take the best player available. Does that change now that the roster is mostly in place and you made it as far as you did? Yep, we're going to take the worst player this year. Okay, I'm, I'm going to report that. <laughs> Just a few more. Um, let's go to Jonathan Simmons. Hey, Travis, good afternoon. Good to see you again. Um, two things. First of all, congratulations on a uh, an epic season. I think that uh, you guys moved probably farther than anybody expected. Um, two things. One, the Hawks seem to have a lot of problems with physicality with big men in the paint. Do you anticipate adding a player of that caliber on or trying to find someone? And number two, Coach Nate talked about his own personal growth and how it impacted the team. How pleased were you to see that affect this team and build the camaraderie that we all saw. Yeah. So we'll start with coach McMillan. Um, you know, obviously extremely impressed with, um, coach and I, I can't remember, and I think this has been reported. So it's kind of a boring story, I guess, but it was after one game where we didn't play that well. And, you know, Nate went into the locker room and addressed the team and handed himself as you would expect with, uh, nothing but class and dignity and I went into his office the next day and I said man you're a way way better way better person than I would I would have walked in there and started cursing and he said no you know he, there was a time in his coaching career that that's what he would have done as well but you know he's learned through the course of all his experiences that you know that's not the best way to approach um, people and so uh, anytime that you can surround yourself with people that can learn and continue to grow uh, especially when someone like Nate, who's had so much success as a head coach, but still realizes that there's always room to grow and get better. Um, those, those are the kind of people that we, we want to have here in the, with us at the Atlanta Hawks. So um, that answer that question. And then for, 
uh, the first part of your question, as far as the physicality, uh, I, I have a ton of confidence in, in the big guys on our team. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously Brooke Lopez, they, they call him Splash Mountain. You know, the mountain's there for a reason. You know, he's an extremely big guy and he's really talented. Um, you know, when you get to the part of the season that we got to, um, you know, the Eastern Conference Finals, you're, you're playing against good teams and good players. Um, so I, I, I have confidence. I get the short answer is I have confidence in the big guys on our roster to be able to compete. Thanks, Travis. Kevin Chenard. The NBA Rules Committee was going to change some of its rules with regard to shooting fouls. I wonder if you had an opinion on that. Travis, you're muted right now. Um, I'm not sure how that happened. Um, somebody must have done that. Um, do I have any opinions on that? I think there are some plays that players are getting really good at drawing fouls that, that aren't shooting motions, right? You go back to the rip through where guys are creating, creating contact to get to the foul line. Um, that's an art form. Um, do I like to see it? No, but there are certain players in the league that are really good at it. Um, I think personally, um, if you're an offensive player and you get the defensive player to leave their feet, you should be rewarded for that. Um, the NBA obviously disagrees with that. There are some plays that I do think shouldn't be shooting fouls, but that particular play, which I believe they're planning on changing, if you, you know, Lou Williams has made a career on that, right? Pump fake, guy jumps, lean into him, free throw. Uh, what I really disagree with, if you're going to make that call on the perimeter, you have to make the same call in the lane, and they are not going to do that. If you're in the lane and you pump fake and the guy leaves his feet and you jump into him a little bit, those are going to be free throws. That is that does not make sense to me that why you would officiate that one way on the perimeter and a different way on in the lane, but they do officiate obviously the lane different than they do the perimeter. So, but I'm not the rules guy, so I don't, I don't have a vote. <laughs> uh, let's go back to Zach Klein. Two quick things, Trav. When did you feel the Hawks basketball is back? The city has always embraced you know, the culture, the hoops, um, you feel it's here to stay for years to come? I certainly hope so. I, I, I tell you, you know, you guys ask me about how I feel about the players, but I think what we saw, how we saw the community get behind this group um, during this run, I mean, that you take more pride and joy in that than, than anything else to see, you know, little kids get excited about, you know, the Atlanta Hawks get excited about the players. I, Yesterday was with my son and one of his friends, and you know, they asked me why I had to go to work on Fourth of July, and I said exit interviews. And then they went through literally every single player on our roster. What'd you tell him? What'd you tell him? What'd you tell him? So to see two seven-year-old little boys know all 17 players on the Hawks is is pretty exciting. And you know, we we saw that throughout throughout the community, um, and you know, the support we had from the fans at games uh, was great. And I, I certainly hope that continues. And we're going to do everything we can to try to continue to make the, the community proud of our organization for sure. I just got a text from Steiny's agent. He's holding off for max money. Just like <laughs> Everybody wants max money. You know that. It looks like the last two will come from Chris Kirshner and then Emmanuel Glaze. Um, Chris obviously has a player option. Have you spoken with him and, and are his plans to pick that up and play for the Hawks? Uh, obviously spoke to him yesterday. You know, we didn't talk about that. I, you know, I'll be in talk with his agents um, about, you know, what they plan to do. And then um, did this run with this young team remind you at all of what you guys did in Golden State back in 2013? 2013. Oh, yeah, a little bit, uh, to be honest with you. You know, that was our first uh, first run. Uh, you know, we were able to beat Denver in the first round uh, when they had a great year. And then, you know, we ran into the Spurs in the second round. But, it, you know, we were ahead. Of, you know, Steph was playing on a bad ankle then. Um, not dissimilar to Trey, I suppose. Um, Andrew Bogut um, got hurt in that series as well. And that, that's the one thing about the playoffs, um, you know, you have to have a little luck and 
you know, injury luck, uh, avoiding luck, I guess. Um, you know, when you look at the teams that have success, you know, they, they avoid that because um, it's a grind, you know, every other day, traveling every other day. So it's, uh, listen, they say you get lucky. I remember when we won it in 15, everyone said, oh, we we're so lucky. I'm like, yep, and I'm glad we were. Emmanuel. Travis, you, you made a, another big midseason move by bringing Lou Williams to the team, and he made mention recently of a little hint that he might return. Would, would the Hawks be interested in bringing him back to um, add that what he had with the playoff run that he had as well? Yeah, I told Lou yesterday, um, I, I thought he was great for us, both on and off the court, obviously an extremely productive player, but I thought just the way he interacted with all our young guys, um, you know, his personality, um, it was great. Um, I mean, we really saw, and I, I've given Lou credit for this, you know, uh, when he showed up, we saw a big growth in Oneka, and it's just the way that he communicates with the guys, you know, during games, in the locker room, on the practice court. He's just got a, a very good way about him. So, yeah, to answer your question, yes, I, we'd be extremely open to talking to he, he and his camp about moving forward. I, I thought he added a lot to our team. Any final questions for Travis? There are no hands raised at the time. So we Thank will get you a deal. July, everyone. Thank you, Travis. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Travis.